Welcome back to Vancouver and the 2018 BC Liberal Convention. Uh, Jordan, there's no guests anymore, it's just you and me. It's hashtag BC Poly Hot Stove Time, <laughs> wrap up edition. What are your thoughts? Well, Andrew Wilkinson hit it out of the park today. And you know, you hear that out of every convention with every leader, but I'm not sure what it was, if it was low expectations, if it was a little bit of anxiety about where the state of the party, if it's been a year of trying to get ourselves up off the mat, but there is no doubt Andrew Wilkinson stood up and gave the best speech uh, in politics, uh, in his political life that any of us have heard him give. Uh, the place was electric, multiple standing ovations, genuine emotion from a leader yeah. who has been criticized for not you know, showing that kind of genuine emotion. Um, he ticked a lot of boxes today. I mean, you mentioned the emotion. I think that's what stood out the most for me. Is I, I, I don't think it's a bad thing at all for a, any leader, uh, or much less a man, to, uh, to show uh, have a, the voice crack every so often when they're talking about something that is as, as genuinely important to them as, as this is obviously to Andrew. And yeah. so, I, I mean, I don't think he was doing it to for political gain, but I don't think it looks bad on him either. No, no, exactly. And you know, he really took this new. You know, they they made a big deal here all weekend about the new brand identity, the brand identity, the brand. And you know, the old one was today's BC Liberals. Well, that was you know the Christy Clark era, that had moved on. You know, opportunity for all of BC. And you know, the question is, well, what does opportunity mean? And you know, what does it mean to Andrew Wilkinson? What does it mean to the BC Liberal Caucus going forward? Um, I feel like we have a a really good indication what it means to him and. You know, it's, there's some interesting stuff. Look, I, you know, I haven't heard a, a, uh, a BC leader stand up and say, we've got to ban foreign money in politics. You know, we've got to stop foreign yeah. money from coming in and influencing the way British Columbia, you know, handles its business. Yeah. It's the next logical step, isn't it? it? It is the next logical step. And I don't know how, if you're on the other side, if you're the NDP, how do you fight that, right? You know, all of a sudden, Andrew Wilkinson is putting his hand into the, uh, is putting his hand out and saying, no, no. You guys, okay, you guys have owned finance reform, campaign finance reform for a long time, but, you know, you've stacked the deck to favor you. Now, yeah. this is something that we need to do to make it fair for all British Columbians. So, interesting, it, it was interesting. There was a couple of these policy things that were logical extensions that played just a little bit against type for the BC Liberals. The uh, stuff on, on uh, women's equality yeah. uh, across the Crown Corporations, across the provincial workforce, making sure that little girls have the same opportunity as little boys. Something we don't like to talk about in BC because we think we're so you know wonderfully cosmopolitan yeah, and true. modern, and yet it is a, a problem which, in all of North America. Which statistics bear out? I mean, there's just no getting around this anymore. It's no. a it's a thing. Exactly, and you know he talked about it, showed genuine emotion, and it was the women in the room yeah. who jumped to their feet and gave a standing ovation. And <laughs> you and I saw Christy Clark at a lot of conventions over the years. Yeah, you know, for some reason. Christy had troubles connecting with women, and yet now we have the doctor lawyer from Vancouver, Kilshana, who is who has found something, some common ground he can talk to a lot of women about. Well, and even just stylistically in the speech, I mean, uh, apparently he used no notes, which is remarkable for. A, I, I didn't time the speech, but I'm going to guess about 35, 40 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so no no notes, teleprompter, no teleprompter, and freeform walking across the stage. Um, that is remarkable. And talking it, specific stories yeah. as he was doing it, you know, giving specific anecdotes like you do in, like Bill Clinton made famous in yeah. political speeches, seamlessly, effortlessly. Yeah, I mean, as someone who was a speechwriter in a, in a former life, I would not recommend that. You're, you're for, obsolete. Yeah, I am obsolete. <laughs> so I, I would not recommend that for, for most uh, oh. leaders because it's it's more difficult. Uh, but apparently, what I'm told is that Andrew, because we're watching him sort of uh, learn this job as he goes. I mean, let's not forget he was first elected just in 2013. Right. And he's uh, only been the leader since February. He had a... Uh, his last long speech was at UBCM yeah. with a with the and he had, had non-contentious portfolios. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you're the BC Liberal Minister of Technologies. Is you're not getting exactly. a lot of questions in the house. Oh, it's true. And then uh, apparently he uh, he did the speech at UBCM and and uh, didn't feel as comfortable. And so they decided to try this today. And I mean, whatever you think of the the party or or even in fact the contents of the speech, he was comfortable. Yeah, you, th you think of all the people we've had up on stage and. You know, before Andrew's speech, you know, what does Andrew need to accomplish? He needs to connect with the audience. Yeah. He needs to rally the troops. He needs to pr pr uh, uh, produce a forward-looking vision. And you think of the guests we've had after. I mean, look, Todd Stone and Mike Lee ran against this man. You know, it's nine months ago, they were yeah. each other's throats trying to become the leader of the party. And they're the first two. We didn't plan it. They volunteered. They wanted to come up and talk about what yeah. their leader accomplished today. And it's, uh, I, I think, a powerful testament to the power of that speech. Well, sure. We just had uh, Michael Lee on the stage and, and said, you know, you're the only one here on the stage who's debated Andrew Wilkinson. Yeah. And uh, Michael said, yeah, he's tough. I yeah. mean, it's, let's, 
There's no. He's a smart like he's a smart guy. You don't become a doctor and a lawyer and a deputy <laughs> minister and you know yeah. the only dumb thing he's ever done is get into politics, really. <laughs> but you know, it's he's he's a, a a quality human being, and I feel like I'm leaving this weekend and, and that speech knowing him a little better. Like I've got a little bit of glimpse into his into his world, what he sees. Uh, Rich, Col Rich Coleman's just Rich off Coleman camera. Trying to, he's trying to distract he's, uh, us. Trying to distract us. It's uh, a common thing. I, I want to talk to you about that. It would be easy for Andrew Wilkinson to turn his back and say, you know, wow, the old the old days of the BC Liberals don't matter. Yeah. But he singled out Christy Clark for yes. her vision on infrastructure and LNG. Singled out the work that Rich Coleman, uh, you know, did on getting LNG to where to the point where even the NDP couldn't screw it up, which I thought was a funny line. Um, you know that that. That doesn't normally happen in these kind of political things. He was not afraid to take the good parts of the history yeah. and highlight them and use them as a, a building block for where they want to go in the future. Well, yeah, I mean, after 16 years in government and your first convention speech back, there, there's going to be a temptation to say something to the effect of either everything we've done is right and we just have to do it again and we'll win, or the exact opposite, which is burn it down. He, there was a, a tightrope to walk here of recognizing the strengths and success and some of the accomplishments while also saying we need to continue to adapt and evolve and, and uh, put forth some big ideas. And, uh, you know, I, I thought he did a pretty good job. Yeah, look, putting the boots to ICBC. I mean, look, I was a former Canadian Taxpayers Federation advocate. I hate ICBC. You know, I think it's stupid that government has a monopoly. This guy got up there and said the things that I've been wanting to hear from a party for a long time. You know, this is a 1970s invention. The world's changed. The insurance regulatory environment's changed. The only thing, you know, that screws up ICBC are politicians being in charge because they don't understand insurance. And they're always, you know, subject to you know, wanting to do what's important, what's best for the electorate, which isn't necessarily what's best for drivers. You know, this is a big step. It's a big step for a party. Um, 85 or 90 percent of BC Liberal members here endorsed this resolution right. to, to basically uh, maybe even get rid of ICBC, but certainly open up to competition. That is a big, bold idea that will, you know, he could present that is different than it, it takes away the sting of David Eby saying, well, you guys created a dumpster fire. Yeah. Okay, Dave, NDP screwed it up. Soka screwed it up. Sure, we screwed it up. But. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to fix it yeah. by getting rid of it. Literally every government for the last 40 years has had its, has had its trouble. And I suspect that if you asked uh, any member of the NDP right now in a moment of lucidity, yeah. if they would probably agree that at the very least something needs to change. Yeah, no, absolutely. You don't want to have this constant bleed going on financially, but you also don't want to have, even when it was profitable, then the temptation became taking money out of it instead of returning it to drivers, using it to fund you know, yeah. public services. So when it's not working well, you have to put money into it, and when it's working too well, the yeah. temptation is irresistible to use it as a cash cow. Yeah, no, exactly. So yeah, that's a big idea. He had some funny uh, imagery around it that you can already see shaped into campaign ads. Yeah. You know, that 70s corp, I, I'd go out and, if I were them, I'd go out and register that domain, that 70s corp.com, and throw uh, together an ad of, mm -hmm. like, the kids from that 70s show singing about ICBC would be pretty funny. Jordan will have filed the trademark by the time you watch this. Well, uh, me or the Taxpayers Federation, I'm sure they're all over it. And look, <laughs> you know, he even stood up there and mentioned... One of the ideas that you know I was part of crafting at the Tax Base Federation, turning ICBC into a co-op. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw honestly, the, I I saw the glow on your face. You know, Katie Merrifield's here, and she's uh, looking, you know, very like, uh, oh, you know, like her little baby's grown up. Andrew Wilkinson commanding the stage. I was like, look at my little ICBC co-op <laughs> idea. It's grown up. It's made it all the way to a and you wanted major to have all the convention. same opportunities. It's all the other dreams. That's right. That's, that's right. right. I wanted to be. I wanted to have that fairness. So. Yeah, really, a number of really interesting policy um, items, things that he didn't give away either. Like, think, you know, these are the basic principles that we're going to work on, and they're going to roll out the policies to yeah. follow, platform to follow. And before we go uh, too deep into it, it's always interesting, uh, a policy debate in any political convention, but the BC Liberals are, are different than most parties in Canada in that it's a coalition of federal liberals and federal conservatives, so there's always going to be some disagreement yeah. uh, because this half the party is... Uh, our, our enemies on the federal stage. Yes. And so uh, I'm sure that's a, a wedge that uh, other parties uh, will, will always constantly be looking for. But I mean, there were some debates here that were closer than others, but I just don't see anything that looks like a uh, big division. No, exactly. Langley East, uh, I'm a delegate for Langley East. We had a, a, a non, an anti-union monopoly resolution passed with 100% of the vote. So the uh, only resolution to pass with 100%, by the way. So uh, victory lap for us at, at ICBA and, and for all those workers who want fairness. Um, you know, one of the other things that you talked about, I just want to bring up here, um, the tax issue. So mm. he was really clear. I mean, brutally clear. Take the 18 taxes and tax increases the NDP have brought in the last year 
and we're going to get rid of them. I think he used the phrase, take a chainsaw to take them. A, take a chainsaw to them. That is a... Uh, Not a very Andrew Wilkinson image, but... No, he, but... A man's got to do what a man's got to do. Heck of a campaign ad there. <laughs> That's really interesting because what, what we're hearing then is the Liberals aren't uh, interested in just kind of taking out the five or six noisy things that, you know, get get attention. They really do want to, uh, you know, eradicate this, uh, the damage that the NDP have done to the economy, and they're willing to take the bold steps and, frankly, you know, exercise the restraint spending-wise to make that happen. If you're Andrew Wilkinson, uh, you might be feeling good right now, but there's really no time to rest because this is a very big week, uh, the debate with the Premier on Thursday night. Yeah, I thought uh, Katie gave us some good uh, insight into what's going on in that debate. I'd love to know who's playing John Horgan in the uh, <laughs> in those debates. but I would love to know who's playing Andrew Wilkinson on the NDP side. <laughs> and I would love to know what Andrew Weaver thinks of all this. Yeah, maybe Ravi, Kail maybe Ravi Kailan's playing. Uh... Well, he got some good insights. He was here today yeah, observing. Right. As, uh, as If you don't know, uh, there are usually representatives from other parties here, and that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, Ravi Kalan, the NDP MLA for Delta North, was the observer here today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's here today after turning his back on the people of Delta by opposing the Massey Bridge, but that's a story for another day. Well, if you saw earlier today <laughs> on the Orca, uh, his counterpart in Delta, Ian Baton, had some very strong things to say about that. Yes, yes. So, you know, it, it, there's a lot going on. The debate will be fascinating. Look, this was a chance to reinvigorate the party. Uh, I think it's fair to say the membership here are going to go home. They're fired up. They have a lot of faith in Andrew Wilkinson. You know, they can get out. They're excited to go out and talk about that guy they just saw on that stage. Now the question is, can he, you know, land the second punch uh, at this debate on Thursday night when, you know, all of the media will be watching. Uh, basically, only the media will be watching. A few, uh, a few British Columbians will be watching, I'm sure. But, you know, it's how that message spreads out of there. Can he stand up to uh, John Horgan? Can he look like a premier in waiting? Yeah. Can he make a, you know, a, a strong, passionate case without coming off as angry or, or trying to provoke Horgan? Um, you know, Horgan, Horgan's a charming guy when he wants he to be. And he's a good debater, too. He'll, he'll try to charm his way through it and, um, you know, you know, I, I know the Liberals aren't taking it for granted. I know they don't think that Horgan won't be prepared because oh, it I will don't be. Think they'll, I don't think they'll underestimate John Horgan. If they, even yeah. if they were doing so last year, they're, they're not doing it now. He no. is the premier. Exactly. So it'll be very interesting to see that. Of course, you and I will be doing our live post-game show after the uh, big debate. You uh, would expect nothing less. That's right. Uh, you'll be back, Victoria. I'll be in uh, our Burnaby uh, ICBA uh, office, and we'll do a uh, uh, Skype, uh, a live BC Poly hot stove right after. So if you are watching that debate Thursday night, uh, make sure that you do uh, send us emails, leave us comments, send us texts, uh, yeah. jordan at icba.ca. And uh, McLean at theorca.ca. Yeah, as we're going, because uh, we'll talk about a few of those uh, yeah, during absolutely. the coverage. But yeah, I've had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun this weekend. Here. It has been a lot of fun. Thanks, yeah. uh, thanks very much for being here, and thanks very much for watching.